I got this DM this morning that was sent last night, and it's so bizarre that I have to share it with you guys. I understand where he's coming from. I understand the origin story and the psychology behind it, but it's bizarre, okay? Um, Bert, I didn't have the email to send you guys this, but I follow you on social and had to message you immediately. Producer at the Bert Show. Uh, that's the email. Yep. <laughs> um, she says, uh, this is the most Bert Show thing you'll hear all day. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's one of those, should I date him or let him go things you guys do? Anyway, I've been seeing a guy for about a month. We've had a great time together. Every time we've hung out, we've always met wherever the date is. So I guess if they're going to go to a restaurant or something, she gets a new Uber drives and they meet there, right? Um, so yesterday was the first time he picked me up to go for drinks. Uh, he was super excited to take me because this is his, uh, his very bar. Favorite, I think. Bar, but it's all the way on the other side of town. Everything's normal so far, right? Well, he pulls up next to a car at an intersection and in mid-sentence tells me to hold on a second. He rolls down his window to get the driver's atten attention next to us and signals to her that he wants to talk to her. I couldn't figure out what he was doing. She was on her phone and he says, can you please get off your phone and focus on driving? What you're doing is really dangerous. She looks at him really weird and drives off. He turns to me and he says, sorry, I know this must look weird, but about eight months ago, my younger cousin was in an accident and was killed by a driver on his phone that never saw my cousin. Mm. So now anytime I see a driver on the phone, I say something to him um, in their memory or in her memory, I should say. So Bert Show, he did this two more times on the way to the restaurant and once again on the way home. I totally understand why he's doing it, but this is not normal behavior. I was freaked out and more uncomfortable every time he did it. I mean, one day, who knows how somebody could react. I have only gone out with him for like a month. It's too early. To, is it too early to say something to him or should I just move on? Other than that, he seems like a really decent guy. So one eight five five Virtue. And I think this makes him a decent guy. Um, <clears throat> saying that this is not normal behavior. This is grief. Like, this is how he's coping with his grief of the loss of his cousin and um, trying to make sense of that loss and trying to turn that loss into something good, which is warning other people who are on their phones and who are distracted that they need to be paying attention. So do I think this is a ditch offense? No. And I actually, I, 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 I personally find it rather endearing, but that's just me. Yeah, I'm, I'm not mad at him. Mm -hmm. I understand um, how traumatic events and situations can cause you to look at things very differently. I personally would, would not handle it this way, but that's not everybody. Um, so, I mean, if this is how he chooses to handle it and it makes him feel better and it makes him feel like he's actually helping people, I think you have to let him be who he is. And I don't think she should talk to him about it. If it bothers her, then I understand her feeling like maybe I should walk away from it. But I don't think she should try to change him or anything like that. That's the way he's dealing with his grief. So they're a month into this relationship, right? That's I, fresh. It's fresh. I, I don't know uh, that the timing is right to say something about it. Mm -mm, I've had bananas longer than that. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> but I do think, and I agree with you, that this is certainly the grieving period he's mm -hmm. still going through also. And I understand what he's going through. Like, this is the only way that I can make sure this doesn't happen to somebody else. Like, their family doesn't hurt the way that we're hurting right now. But he's got some work to do here, man, because this is not the proper, I mean, in no way, shape, or he's, he's putting himself and whoever he's driving with in very dangerous situations. Now, when you put it that way, and that's a very valid point because you never know how somebody's going to react mm -hmm. to you. And people fly off the handle. They are teetering. I feel like everybody is on a ledge these days, and all it takes is that one person rolling down a window telling them to get off their phone that's going to have them spiral and do something, some type of road rage issue, and God forbid they have a gun in the car. You just, you never know. Mm -hmm. And I, I, can, I can respect that. That, that side of it. Could you imagine being a passenger in his car, too? And again, uh, I don't want to sound like I'm not being empathetic, but if you're in this in the car with this dude and you just know that this is going to happen three or four times every time you're the passenger in that car, that that's going to make me feel pretty uneasy, man. I'm probably going to say, you know what? I'm just going to meet at the restaurant.
That's a fair point. That would make yeah. that would definitely make me uncomfortable. I, but I wouldn't feel like I could change that about him after a month. You got to let him be who he is. So continue to date. I wouldn't, but I don't think that's a reason to leave somebody. <laughs> yeah. I still find it endearing. You find it endearing. But now it's endearing and dangerous. It's dangerous. <laughs> it really is. I say date, just meet him places. Okay. Meet him at the game. <laughs> okay. Meet him at the restaurant. <laughs> okay. Meet him. So when she's in labor, she's like, I'll meet you at meet the hospital. You there. <laughs> the Burt Show. So first, thanks for watching. Second, you like what you just watched? That just scratches the surface. Get the Burt Show on any podcast platform. We're so good.